this is Serva. And this is Johannes. And you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And today we are taking a look at Bitoku from designer Germand Milan and uh, publisher Dever Games. It plays from 1 to 4 players in about 120 minutes. Which translates to 2 hours, which is in hours and not minutes if you yes. prefer that in your time zone. So, Bitoku is a game about Japanese mythology where you are yokai and you're trying to, you're playing the yokai and you have the spirits that are dice and you're sending them out into the world to do actions and the spirits might build buildings or move on places with pilgrims with just one eye and they're very small like an egg and then you might do other actions that give you resources so you can then give alcohol to small other spirits who then will ride on dragonflies and give you bonuses and if you do this correctly and, and you get points that is good you can also get stones and the stones are very happy to give you points for different things because the stones are really fans of different kind of buildings like you have one stone that really likes red buildings but another stone don't like red buildings so we will not give you any points for those and you also have these small kodamas that are going to move around in a lake and the player or the kodama who runs the farthest away is going to get the most fish at the end of the game and that is what you're going to do in Bitoku makes a lot of thematic sense so it is <laughs> just a it's a euro game about getting points you are going to play cards that have different actions on them when you play the cards you're going to unlock dice the dice are then going to be those are the spirits you place them on the board to do different actions in different areas and then after you have placed them there and done on the actions you can later turn you can move them over the river to basically use them a second time to then lose a pip and you'll be able to do another action depending on where you place them in the first time so you are building buildings you're getting these alcohol spirits and these drunk spirits and dragonflies to get points you have these fish cards which gives you or vision cards which are actually called vision or mission cards because there are mission cards called vision cards and you will get points for those that's basically what to do in the game yeah <clears throat> that's more my language the last explanation there it's more like my the Euro first brain. one was me trying to to do the, the, thematic the thematics one. of this game yes. and also you get big bitokus that you can walk on to get points so that's cards let's with a path on them that is true yes so if you want to know what you're actually doing in the game more than like that brief overview there's other videos that are better for that we're going to talk about the game, so let's start with something. What do you want to start with? I want to start with how the game looks, the artwork and components. And if you have seen picture of this game, uh, because we have pictures in our video. Like this see, one? Yes. You can see that it looks amazing. Beautiful. Like the artwork is magnificent. Mm -hmm. and It's not the magnificent, that's it, a board game. <laughs> and it really connects the Japanese folklore theme and I, I, it looks like a busy board. Mm -hmm. It's very clear that they have, um, um, what do you call it, really prioritized the artwork. artwork yeah. But once you get into it, like a one, two, three plays, mm -hmm. it's fine. I think it's very like um, easy to see what's what when you're used to it. And the, the, the beautiful board becomes like, for me, Eurogamer, a little background noise. It's, it's just there. I don't pay much attention to it. I see the building that I want to build and I build mm -hmm. it, yes. I really like the artwork here. I I do think that it's a busy board, but, but if you play it after one play, you're gonna understand what everything is. It's a big board, so when you're sitting, depending on how you play it, we never play like sideways because I'd rather see something far away, upside down, than seeing something sideways because that's the hardest thing to read anything is sideways. So it's kind of hard to see some of the small symbols, but other than that, I think it looks really, really beautiful. One thing like the most beautiful artwork in the game is the Bitoku cards. And yes. where are those usually placed? They are hidden under the Yukai cards um, uh, when they're laying on the table. And when you build your Bitoku path, mm -hmm. they're also like over each other. So most of the time you don't see the beautiful art. But I that's the best really, artwork in the game. Yeah, but I really get the decision that oh, they yeah. have made because mm -hmm. you're saving a lot of space by doing that and mm -hmm. the game is a table hog already, so I, I get it. It's a big game it's and big it also game. has like the one thing that we have talked about many times this year where you pile loads of things on the board and make people not see things on the board. Yes. Again, I wonder if this is like a people playtesting it online 
but but please stop placing high tiles toll on the board so I can't see the board. But yes. I think that it looks really good. Yeah. I think it, it it looks very busy when you start playing it, but it's getting pretty clear where all the actions are and all of that. So yes. uh, I feel like it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and all games have a rule book, and you have read that. So what do you think? I have read it, and then I have read it again, <laughs> and a third time. Because it makes no sense. <laughs> because it's not a very good rule book. I understand what they tried to do. If you saw our coffee traders review, we talked about trying to make like a two thematic rule book. And that did not work there. And that it does not work here. The big problem here is that they just make up names for all the things. Probably these are like Japanese folklore yes. names, but mm. I don't know those names. So there's like place the schnupperdu in the Flaggenschnuffen, and then you will get a Flamdur. And after you put that in your chunglum, you're gonna be free. It's like that makes no sense. And there's not a picture telling me where that Flangur is. And it's just like it, it's so annoying. And, and, and after I got through it, it's even more annoying when it's not that complicated. Yeah. And then it's just like this, and the, the rule book, did you, did you look at the rule book at yeah, all? Yeah, I did look at mm. a little bit at it. Because there's just some like, uh, and then there's like, oh, the movement points, and then that suddenly there's like a, a whole like segment called like Pitoku card, how those work just randomly in there. And then there's just like little paragraphs like, in the margins of the rule book, just like add small like examples and rules and things that just like how to make Pitoku harder. It's just like a variant is just randomly placed at the upper right in one of the first pages of the book with no like logic to where it is. It's like they put stuff in there with what they had there. And that is not good. So now we're going to talk about the other thing which I usually talk about is player aids. Yeah, but I think like the player aids here uh, are saving kind of the bad rule book because oh, yeah. so Absolutely. much of the rules that you need to know yeah. are there. So you we rarely needed to skim the rule mm -hmm. book for things. I, I really appreciate that. But in the the um uh, what do you call it the player play aid as well, like the faces has very like thematic names. Mm -hmm. so now winter is coming and snow is falling and yes. the yuka is say goodbye and you're just like. It says what it means. I'm very grateful for that. But it's clear to me that I'm trying to be very thematic to a point where I fall a little off. But um, but it's all also like a, a, a overview of all the icons. Mm -hmm. And then it says like this icon is a yokai. Yeah. This is a bitoku. This mm -hmm. is a mitami. This is blah, blah, blah. And the, you, you need that. Yes. One thing, this is a nitpick, but it's just really weird because they really wanted the game to be four rounds, which were years of four seasons. But there's only three seasons, so just have to made up a season, yeah. which has nothing in it. The well, third season is new player order, which could have it. been in the other season, which yeah. is kind of like clean up. So yeah. it's kind of, that is, I just understood that now. They just like, they just really wanted it to be four seasons. It so they just had to make like one season, it's just like nothing. Well, so yeah, I don't it, care. But it's the, fine. The, the play rate, as you said, is four pages. It really saves uh, the, the, the playing of the game when you yes. first get through the rulebook and you can teach the game. You don't need a rulebook anymore. Yes. We played this game with two and three players mm -hmm. and we have used about two hours on it. So yes. what the box says, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess if we play a two player again, we can get it a bit down. Yes. Uh, because uh, now it took the same amount with three players and, yes. and two players, which you already said. So I don't know why I <laughs> said it again. I just said it with other words. But we think it might, for us, mm -hmm. it feels a little long. Yes. Um, not like... Too, it's not very very much too mm -hmm. long for me, mm -hmm. but but yeah, I, it could I would have wished it to be a little shorter. I would have liked it to be ninety minutes with three players, and I think you can approach that if yeah. you play it a lot. But then again, like there's not that much AP in the game. Oh. There's like a little bit here and there, but most of like the, it, the the things you go through take a little bit of time, even though the actions are pretty quick and, and not that yes. hard to do. Now we're basically segueing a little into gameplay game here. <laughs> and because what you do is really um, play a card, mm -hmm. place a die mm -hmm. or move a die. Over the river. Yes, to the hills. over the river to the hills. The hills are alive in yeah. the toku. 
and um, those actions usually gives you very little mm -hmm. it so it feels like you're doing very few things on your turn so actually i don't feel like the downtime is a big thing in this game i feel like it goes pretty snappy but sometimes you can get these like combos mm -hmm. that for example if you uh, activate a building you get to do something and then you do your main action mm -hmm. and you get for example uh, some of these spirits combined and then you get another bonus and then it might take a little time but I, but i like that you in general have this quick simple actions yeah i do feel like the i feel like you can get to what you're saying now but i didn't feel like it was that way the first time you played yeah it mm -hmm. might have been just because you had ap and you don't <laughs> that's true you don't feel so time I, passing there yes, uh, <laughs> no but i i don't feel i i agree with you like the actions that's that's what makes it kind of weird because all of the actions are pretty quick and snappy and short but still the game lost yeah, that but long. We, but, but still, like, we played it a few times now. Mm -hmm. And still we are just like, oh, what is uh, this word again? What is this? Because the the theme, right? Yeah, but I'm there's no... there still. There's only symbols in the game. So there's nothing that says, like, do you have a token on no, this no, new no. frog? In? No, there's none less. of that. And it's just, like, it's just symbols. So when you understand the game, it's actually really smooth. And yeah. this one thing, like, I think... Most people who got to play this game thought it was going to be a heavier game than it was. Oh yeah, The rule sure. set feels like it's going to be a heavier game. Yes. When you get into it, it feels like it's a bit of a heavy game. But it's really a medium game. Yeah, I agree. It feels like a, a, a little a tactical game. Mm -hmm. Most of like the decisions I make are like... Um, I might have an overhead plan mm -hmm. in my head. But usually I see like a good thing right there and then and I go for it. And um, like I... I feel like in this game you can have something that you focus on, but mm -hmm. you're going to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Probably. It's like I feel like it's very natural that you a lot of things that you are able to do will give you something positive. Mm -hmm. What I was gonna say about the 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 the, the um, weight of the game, like yes. it being less heavy than it feels like, it that. Uh, the rules overhead and everything else makes me think it's gonna be a heavier game. Mm. So it know that if you're going into this game that it is a medium medium plus game i felt like some of the heavier games we played this year i kind of had like the same rules overhead but a lot more interesting decisions oh yeah so what do you do you feel like the decisions you do in the game are interesting let's first let's first talk about like the there is like is there anything innovative here is there anything new or does it just feel like the same euro game uh, I think like the the how you do your actions mm -hmm. is innovative innovative and feels fresh to me. Yeah. Like you have to place your cards first or at least one of your cards because that is going to unlock your dice. You want to unlock your dice as fast as possible mm -hmm. because you want to snag the um, worker placement spots yep. faster than your opponents. And then you want to, for example, let's see, I want to do this action, but that is connected to these cards mm -hmm. on the other side of the river. Yep. Then I have to like see, okay, do I want this action that bad? Or do I want to do a suboptimal action for me to get that other card? And you want to also go over the river as mm -hmm. fast as possible to, to do that before the other players. But that was something that i really thought was better with three players oh yes yeah. the game is better with three players and two players absolutely yeah because for some reason when you give you open up some more possibilities mm -hmm. with more players and then it felt more interesting it felt like i was uh, it was more interesting decisions yeah i would yeah. say the timing is more interesting yeah. because with two mm. players most of the time like you have some special abilities that unlock dice at the beginning of the game but or over the round but mostly you're gonna play a card to unlock the dice then you're gonna use that dice because there's only one space for each action place in in a two-player game and then you're gonna play another card and you're gonna play that dice and you're gonna play the third game and play that dice and that's not happening when you play with more players because mm. as you said you have more options so that it's kind of weird like making it less tight yeah makes it more interesting yeah, because right. the order you do things is more interesting yeah uh, so i agree like that that part of the game like the way you do your actions that's pretty neat and it mm. feels kind of like a mix between a 
because you can also get new cards in your hand. So like it's a super yes. mini mm -hmm. deck builder, also with with dice worker placement and some and, uh, choose your own scorings as well mm -hmm. in that that uh, same mechanism ish. That yeah. is true. Not like in a way it doesn't feel like because it's one of my favorite mechanisms. It doesn't feel like that. It's a tiny, tiny. It's a tiny little bit of the game because this is a. A smorgos board basically of different scoring ways and mm. different it's kind of yes. like a point salad -y game there's yeah, so yeah. many almost everything you do is going to give you points in some way or another it's not like i do this i get four points i do that i get four points mm. but many 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 ways of getting points yeah. basically uh one thing i want to talk about is the um you said like a few seconds ago huh? probably more than that Fucking like minutes. How how meaty does the game feel? How interesting? How tight are the actions? How uh, how do you how you does your brain burn when you play this game? Because you said that this is might not be the heaviest of games that you might get the impression of when you read the rules mm -hmm. and look at the game. I feel it's not it was not that, but we can talk about that. Okay, I, will, I, will I don't know what the other thing was. Yes, I don't know, um, but I think that this game is it's just like I know it now. It's not too heavy, uh -huh. it's not too tight, mm -hmm. it's not one of the games I sit there and be like, oh, I need to go there uh, and get those three of this resource mm -hmm. for my plan to go like around in the world. Maybe like in the last round, mm -hmm. you'd be like a little trying to squeeze out the minimum that you need to meet your goal. But uh, throughout the game, it is meaningful decisions, yeah. but I feel like I have a lot of freedom in my choice. It, I don't feel like I'm struggling to make ends meet, kind of. Mm -hmm. It really depends for me on what kind of things I focus on. Mm -hmm. If I go for the vision cards, which have different scoring abilities, if I go for many of those, I kind of like have a path. I need to fill oh, yeah. those up because those are basically recipes. You need to have like two buildings and, 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 and one resource and two dragonflies, for example, like these yeah. are, are, are different things you have to have and the more of those cards you have, you have to have more of these specific things. And that kind of gives the order of things you do. That's true. I feel like that kind of gives the way. The same with the stones, the Evacari stones. Evacari? Evacari stones, which gives you points for different specific things. Mm -hmm. Those kind of like gives you a path to go on. Yes. Other than that, you can just do different things to get points. The thing I was did forget earlier yes. was that when you play with, with, with more than two players, you always, when you place in an area, you have to place a die with a higher number. Oh, yeah. That's true. And the way your numbers go up on the dice is that you spend these amulets and I enjoy that part because there was there was times where I was like oh I had to do that action now and uh, if I don't do it now like I could probably do it different time but especially last round as you said yeah. and it was a five and I only had like a two or a four so I had to get those more amulets to be able to do that action yeah and I enjoy the idea of that but the problem is that at least like this is not like a, a fact it's just like the way it felt when we played is that I will always unlock the highest die first and use that and maybe on that action I will get some amulets uh, if I get some amulets then like I will not get some amulets with my one and then be able to do that on the one and also like the higher die I do make uh, the better action I get and the harder I make it for you to do the action so yeah. most of the time I would just like I would unlock the highest die use that yes. and then unlock the next one and hopefully push it up a bit a little bit and uh, so that ended up the dice values ended up being not that interesting for me. Yeah, like the the, the order that I placed my dice mm -hmm. ended up being the same as you said. It seemed like that was the logical way to play the game. That is true. So we had talked about a lot of the things in the game. Uh, the artwork is amazing. It is pretty smooth when you get into the rules that are really bad. Uh, it has this weird thematic thing. The biggest question is, of course, is it fun? Is it fun? That's a good question. I feel like I enjoy this game, mm -hmm. but it's not one of my favorites from this year. Mm -hmm. And I, it was so much buzz around it, you know? Yep. It was hard to not get a little hyped for it. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think it's a good blend of mechanisms in the game. But still, there's other worker placement games that I maybe like look towards when I want this kind of um, meatiness in my game. Mm -hmm. And also, the the gatekeeper, the rules are a little in the way, f and yeah, it m might make the game more complicated than it is in itself. But overall, I think it's a good game. I will rate it a seven. Okay. Uh, this is one of the games I actually like less than you. Like most of the time, I'm like Mr. Enthusiasm. 
I like this game. The first time I played it, I thought it was okay. And then the next times we played, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my decisions. I enjoyed sitting there and, and having, I had fun with the game. I think it's too long for what I'm getting out of it. I feel like the two hours is, is too much for, for the, the, the decisions I make, like the, the depth of those decisions, the importance of those decisions. I, I love how it looks. I, yeah. I, I think the gameplay is, is fun. Like in, in Party Poppers, I would probably give it like two or two and a half. Maybe like I find one that doesn't work and I take out that stuff and so it's a half one. Or just two if I can't find the third one, really depending on, on my mood for that day. Uh, I'm going to give it a 6.5. Yeah. I think it's a fine game. I know a lot of other people love it. and I, I know that you, it might be for you, but for me it was not an amazing game. I'm a bit unsure if I want to keep it in the collection. What do you think? Hmm. I'm still unsure. I I I I like it, but I would like to have it on the shelf and look at it a few mm -hmm, times mm -hmm. and then see if I'm comfortable with like get, not having it on the shelf. Yeah, for know? me it's kind of like put it on the shelf now and then play it next November for Gaper Girl. Yes. Like that's kind of like my my. It's a good thing that Gaper Girl an excuse to put games you would rather not put on the shelf on the Back shelf. On the shelf. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of like my verdict on it. I would like to play it again, but it's not one I would probably choose over many other games. Yes. We hope this review gave you some feelings of the game if it's for you. Uh, yeah, it's a review copy. That's like an important yes, thing to say. Absolutely. I do remember to say it at the beginning of the video. So Keep sorry about that. I'm not going to edit that into the beginning of the video because that will sound really weird. So that is the end of the video. If you are still here and you have not subscribed, you can do so now by clicking the subscribe button. It's fun and it's free and it makes us happy like this. If you want to do something that's not free, you can go to patreon.com slash boardgamingramblings and support us there. That helps us out in many ways and is very nice of you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Cinema. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings and bye bye. bye.